guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Stephanie with Jambalaya Resell. I am a full-time school librarian and a part-time reseller on platforms such as eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Kitizen, Etsy, and Facebook Marketplace. Right now, I'm kind of a full-time, part-time reseller because it's summer break. So I'm off and I have more time to spend on my reselling. But if you've been watching my channel, you've probably picked up on the fact that I have been slacking big time lately. So I plan to have a video coming out about that soon. If you only come to my channel for reselling tips and tricks, you probably won't care about that video because it's going to be a lot about my personal life. But on today's video, I'm going to be doing a what sold. So I am going to be talking to you about all of the items that I have sold in the past two weeks. Usually I have one of these come out every week, but... As I already mentioned, I've been slacking. So we're going to combine two weeks in sales, which really the two weeks combined is not much more than I like to make in one week. So it'll still be about the same length of time. So I'm going to be showing you things sold and talking to you about those things. So if you're into that, stick around. So my first item is this vintage belt with belt buckle. So I saw this at an estate sale and I mostly picked it up for this really unique belt buckle with the duck on it. Um, big belt buckles tend to sell pretty well, especially if they're unique, vintage, whatever. So I saw this and I saw it was branded on the back. Um, so I saw that it was Rain Tree brand. Um, and I saw a lot of people selling just the belt buckle, but I decided to sell the belt buckle and the belt together because the belt was this really nice leather belt and it was still in really good condition. I mean, it did have some scratches, but still a really nice belt. So I paid a dollar at an estate sale for all the belt and the buckle and it sold for $29.95 for shipping, giving me a profit of $20.46. This Bar Harbor, Maine t-shirt isn't necessarily something that I would have picked up at, let, let's say, Goodwill if I was sourcing, but it came in a men's thread up rescue box, and it was new with tag, and obviously there was a buyer out there for it. It sold for $12, and that gave me $6.72. Larry Mahan is a Western brand that I pick up every time I find it in good condition. Um, it has a market. So you will find it is branded. It says Larry Mahan down here on the front. It usually says it up here at the pocket. And of course, that's what the inside tag looks like. It's a cowboy brand. This one was this nice paisley print and it had the pearl snap buttons. I picked it up at an estate sale, not an estate sale, at a garage sale for $2. It sold for $20 and gave me a profit of $9.92. JIT Sleep Collection is not a brand I'd ever heard of, but when I'm at the bins, I usually pick up bras and sleepwear um, just because, I mean, you're paying per pound, you might as well, and that's not really something that people are fighting over, and there's definitely a market for it. So this gown, I had a dollar into it since it came from the bins. It sold for $18.95, and that gave me a profit of $11.50. All right, there's a return opened on this. Now, I don't take returns, but let me tell you just a real quick story. So I bought these at an estate sale last August. So we're coming up on a year. They're listed high. I know they are. This is a high-end brand. I listed it based on comps. So that's where I got the price from. And I mean, they're in really nice condition. The leather's in good condition, but they've just sat. They've gotten some interest, but they've just sat. And so I was really ready to see them go. So I sent out pretty much a half price offer and this guy messaged me back and he just, he had so many questions and stuff. And usually I will just walk away when somebody's asking too many questions. I really will because a lot of questions usually means that they're going to be dissatisfied with the item when they get it. It doesn't matter how well you answer the questions. They're going to find a flaw. If they're asking a lot of questions. They're probably a very particular person. So I usually will walk away from it. But I don't know. I was just 
ready to see the item go. And so I answered the questions. They were like, okay, cool. Um, and so I ended up selling these. I had paid $2 in an estate sale. I ended up selling them for $32 free shipping. Now shipping cost $12.32 because they're shoes. They're not super lightweight. So the person gets the shoes and of course they're dissatisfied with the shoes. They found like they said that the sole was coming apart and that that wasn't pictured or disclosed. And really, if you can see in my pictures, the sole's in pretty good condition. They seriously found like some little nitpicky thing. And then they wanted me to give them a partial refund for cost of repairs. Y'all, by the time this was all said and done, I had profited $13.41. A partial refund for them to do repairs, what? Would that be another $13? I mean, I don't know. I would seriously be negative money and I don't like when I am cornered like that. So I just said, no, I don't do partial refunds. If you're unhappy, just go ahead and open a return and I'll accept it. Because if they open a return and say item not as described, which is basically what they were claiming anyway, then eBay is going to force the return. So I just went ahead and had them send it back to me. Now the person is pretty nice because he sent me a picture. He actually oiled the shoes and got some of these wrinkles out. So they actually look better than when I sent them to him. So I'm just having him return them. I'm going to give him his money back, be in the negative, and then just try to resell them. Um, they do look nicer, like I said, than before. And hopefully the next buyer won't be quite as picky. Um, it's just what it is, but I don't give in to the whole partial refund thing because a lot of times that's a scam and a lot of times I would really rather just lose money and donate the item or trash the item than do a partial refund. That's just me. That's just how I, how I am about it. So anyway, long story short, I made $13.41, but I didn't because I'm going to have to refund him his whole money plus pay return shipping. So it is what it is. It's part of the business. It's not all great sales. Sometimes you have difficult buyers and you have problematic sales. So moving on, because I spent way too long talking about these shoes. This shirt was just, I mean, it's just a Target brand shirt. It came in a lot of items I bought on Facebook Marketplace. So I just auctioned it off at 99 cents with $5 shipping. Um, once again, if you're going to do 99 cent auctions on eBay, make sure you are charging a little bit extra for shipping because if you mess up and don't charge enough on that shipping, you're going to lose money. So with this shirt, I ended up making $1.41. This hurt my soul to auction off at 99 cents. So not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before, I was like, oh, it's Christmas Eve. Let me bleach dye some flannel shirts because I saw it online. And then I almost poisoned myself because the tutorial that I watched told me to put it in bleach, put it in water, and then put it in vinegar because the vinegar would neutralize and like otherwise too much bleach would get in your shirt and it might create a hole. So like the vinegar would neutralize things. Y'all, when you mix bleach and vinegar, it creates toxic gas. So never do that. I think that's why I was supposed to do it in the water in between. And I did, but I had started getting kind of lazy and I wasn't wringing out quite enough. And so anyway, I also did it inside in a room with no ventilation like a dummy. And I almost poisoned myself on Christmas Eve over this shirt really two others and they turned out better and I kept them but I thought I would be able to prop this up on like Poshmark and get 20 bucks for it you know for almost poisoning myself but I didn't instead I auctioned it off for 99 cents and five dollars shipping and made a dollar 29. Don't mix bleach and vinegar. All right these shoes came in a Facebook marketplace lot the same one as that Target tee um, as you can see, they're just kind of beat up shoes. They weren't in great condition. They sold for 99 cents plus, oh, $5 shipping. I thought it was $6 shipping. So that changes my total. So I made 72 cents on these. All right, moving on, Susan Graber. So at an estate sale a week ago, 
the lady loved Susan Graver. First off, the house was absolutely huge. And the guy running the estate sale said that the people weren't dead. You know, a lot of times when you go to estate sales, it's because the people died. But he said the people just bought a bigger house and were getting all new things. And I guess that meant that they were getting all new clothes too. Because seriously, this lady had like five walk-in closets stuffed full of Susan Graver and some other brands that I really didn't know. So I just like loaded up on the Susan Graver. I ended up, it was half price day. So I ended up spending about $85 in total. I got a couple other things. Mostly I bought Susan Graver. Don't have a ton of experience with Susan Graver. It is a QVC brand and it does have a following. Um, a term to use with Susan Graver clothes is liquid knit. And that is if your tag is a combination of polyester and spandex. It's like proprietary to certain QVC clothes or certain Susan Graver clothes. Not sure, but um, look out for that if you're buying Susan Graver. If it's that polyester spandex um, combination, you can kind of feel it and tell. So anyway, bought a ton of Susan Graver and it has been selling super fast. I'm really happy because I like a fast turnaround when I am selling things. So this Susan Graver shirt um, came with this vest as well. So the combo sold for $25. I had approximately $3 into it and that gave me $13.23. This little guy right here, he is Russ Brand. His name was Godfrey, and he's just a really cute giraffe. Um, I picked him up at an estate sale for a dollar. He sold for $21.90 and gave me $13.31 profit. This J. Crew shirt, I believe, came. This came in a thread up rescue box. It sold for $12 and gave me a profit of six. These New Balance shoes also came in a thread up rescue box. And my things are out of order. So one second. Okay, so these sold um, best offer of $37. And they gave me a profit of $23.56. And another Susan Graver shirt. This one sold for $17.95. I had $3 into it and I profited $8.05. I had one Etsy sale of the week and it was this poo. And he's big, big Winnie the Pooh. I got a message last night saying that they didn't receive their item and they want a resolution, but tracking shows it was delivered and I really have less experience on Etsy than I do most other platforms, so I don't know how Etsy handles that, but I don't know. The message was kind of sketched, too, because it had their phone number and wanted me to call them, and I'm not doing that. Never call the phone numbers they want you to call. So, assuming that I don't have to refund anything on this, which I shouldn't because, like I said, tracking shows delivered. This sold for $28.76. I had picked it up at a garage sale for a dollar and I profited $15.05. Facebook actually did pretty well for me this week. So this was my son's pirate ship. And I distinctly remember buying this for him at a garage sale and paying $2 for it. So he's had it for three or four years, maybe. It sold for $20 plus $20 shipping. So Imaginext is a brand to be on the lookout for. Um, they have all different types of play sets and action figures and all aren't super valuable, but some are. So that's something to look out for and look up comps on. So like I said, this sold for $20 plus $20 shipping. I'm saying my cost of goods was zero because it was my son's, but like I said, I know I only paid $2 for it. I profited $17.86. If you take out my original $2, I still make $15.86 on something my son got to play with. So that's pretty cool. This suitcase, this is a vintage suitcase, and as soon as I saw the cute little icon, I knew I had to pick it up to resell. It's a vintage going to grandma's lug, um, luggage. It is by the Trojan brand. Um, this sold for $20. Um, I had it listed at $25. I took a best offer of $20. It sold for $20 plus $20 shipping. I only paid a dollar at a garage sale for it. It was flawed. So if you see this and it's got flaws in it, do not be afraid. Like seriously, look at this. 
all over. Just make sure you disclose it. It was rusty, messed up there, rust. The inside is dirty and messed up. So don't be afraid to pick the, this up if you see it. If it has flaws, just be sure you disclose them. So I profited $16.88 on this. Sold another belt. This one came from the bins. I paid a dollar for it. It was um, real leather. It sold for $15 and I made $13.20. Fiesta wear. So I never find Fiesta wear, but I did find this at a church garage sale. Paid $5 for it. Not all Fiesta wear is going to sell for a ton. That's something you need to know. I thought all of it did. It does not. Platter, for instance, does not sell for a ton. If I had this exact same platter in a lighter purple, which they call the lilac, then instead of selling for $16, this would have sold for like $90. So it's all in the color and the demand, obviously. So just make sure you look it up. Um, but I still profited from it. I paid $5. It sold for $16, $12 shipping, and I made $9.60. My coworker gave me a whole bunch of stuff that she didn't want anymore, and she has a grandbaby, so there were a lot of bottles. These sold the same afternoon as I listed them. I listed them for $5 plus shipping, and I made $4.47. Same for these. I also made, on these, I actually had a higher fee on Facebook, and I think it is based on taxes as well. So on these, I only profited $4.43, but same thing, really. Some more Susan Graver. So I really usually don't cross-post my clothes over to Facebook Marketplace, but I knew Susan Graver was sought after, so I thought I would test the market, and this outfit sold. So I sold this for $30 free shipping, had $3 into it. I used Pirate Ship instead of the Facebook shipping because um, the Facebook shipping does not allow you to choose padded flat rate envelope. So on Pirate Ship, I was able to purchase one of those for $8, and I profited $17.35 on this outfit. I had one kiddos in sale, and it was this pack of underwear. This came in a bulk.com underwear lot. So these sold for $10 free shipping, and I made $4.65. Two sales on Mercari. One was this bundle of boys' Christmas shirts, and these were actually all my sons. And I am pretty sure I purchased this one and this one secondhand, either at the children's consignment sale or at a garage sale. Don't really remember. This one did come from Dillard's, but it was like their New Year's Day sale. So I don't think I paid a whole lot retail for it either. Anyway, he got use out of all of these and has outgrown them. So the lot sold for $9 plus shipping and I made $7.54. This is a vintage SeaWorld seal. I picked it up at the Google Outlet. I had a dollar in it. It sold for $18 free shipping and gave me $9.58. All right, all the rest of my sales are Poshmark sales. So this ceramic cow head came from the same garage sale as the going to grandma suitcase I showed you earlier. And my husband was helping me unload my car. And I was like, and I got this cow head. He was like, for what? <laughs> Somebody will want it. And they did. This sold same day or next day for full asking price of $30. I paid a dollar for it. And that gave me a profit of $23. This Auden bra came from our um, Amazon Target return store called Best Deals. I purchased it on $1 day. It sold for $10 and I made $7.05. This vintage Tommy Hilfiger backpack bag purse thing is from the 90s. I per I went to say purchased and picked up at the same time and just completely stumbled over my words. I picked this up at a garage sale. I think I paid $2, but I don't 100% remember. I may have only paid one. It sold for $17 and I profited $11.60. 
These Antonio Milani shoes came from the Goodwill outlet. I had a dollar into them and I picked them up just based on style because I thought that that Mary Jane style was so adorable. They sold for $15 and gave me a profit of 11. This Forever 21 um, jacket, it is a hooded camo jacket. I believe it was new with tags. It came in a Thread Up Rescue box and it sold for $20, giving me $16. All right, I had a bundle sale of two Under Armour shirts. They came from the same garage sale and I paid $2 each for them. So $4 into this bundle. It was this Under Armour Loose Fit Polo and this Under Armour Loose Fit Polo. They were each listed at $20, but for the bundle, um, sold the whole bundle for $30, giving me a profit of $20. This little starter outfit was my son's and it sold for $5, giving me $2 and five cents. These two Time and True dresses, Time and True is either a Target or a Walmart brand. I always get it mixed up. Either way, these came in a Facebook Marketplace um, bundle I picked up from someone and they just weren't high in dresses. So I decided to bundle them together. They sold for $18 and gave me $14.40. These Sperry's sold the same day I listed them within hours. And so I'm thinking I should have listed them for more, but I like a quick sale. These um, had the gold chip in the bottom. Let me see. I had never seen this before, but they have like a little gold chip down here. So I picked these up at a garage sale. I paid $5 for them. They sold for $35, giving me $23 profit. All right, I'm going to move my face up here. I love picking up vintage lingerie at really anywhere. Estate sales is where I find a lot of it. Um, I just think, number one, it's so pretty. It's much prettier than the stuff that they sell now. And also, I feel like people do a lot of, I don't even know how to say the word correctly, butcher it, boudoir, to do it right, um, photo shoots right now. And I think that the vintage lingerie is something that those photographers look for for those photo shoots. So it tends to sell fairly well for me. Um, this was Henson brand, which I believe if you're going to be picking up vintage lingerie, Henson is a brand to look out for because um, just some of the brands seem a little bit obscure, but Henson seems like people know what that is. Um, anyway, this was just such a cute little pajama top jacket or whatever. It was open down here, but it tied and had these ruffles. I got this at a garage, um, sorry, I got this in an estate sale for $2. It sold for $20 the same night I listed it and gave me $14 profit. This Billabong flannel shirt came in a Thread Up Rescue box. It sold for $20 and gave me a profit of $16. I love Sanook brand shoes. I pick them up anytime the price is right. These came from the same estate sale as all the Susan Graver came from. I think that I paid $2 for them. They sold the same day I listed them. I sold them for $16 and that gave me $10.80 profit. This Hugo Boss shirt came in a Thread Up Rescue box. It sold for $10 and gave me $7.05. All right, I sold a five-piece Susan Graver bundle like a day after listing all of it. I was super excited. So they bundled, let me get my list how it needs to go. All right, they bundled together this piece, this piece, this, this and this and sent me an offer of $90 and I did have to pay an upgraded charge for shipping because it ended up weighing seven right at seven pounds um, but I did have posh credits and your posh credits will go towards your upgraded shipping label so it ended up being okay but it did it did cost me nine dollars um, for shipping 
So I had about $15 into this five piece lot. They offered 90. I did have to do an upgraded shipping label, but that made me have a profit of $48. This Notre Dame shirt came in a Thread Up Men's Rescue box. It sold for $12 and gave me $9.05. Another Susan Graver piece. This person gave me a four star rating but didn't tell me why and that really annoys me. Like, what didn't you like about this? Anyway, um, this sold for $25. I had $3 into it and that gave me $17 profit. This North Face tea came, I believe, from the same garage sale as the Under Armour polo shirts that I showed you earlier. I had $2 into it. It sold for $15, and that gave me a $10 profit. This Indigo Soul shirt was mine. I did buy it at Goodwill and pay $4.50 for it and then wear it a whole bunch of times. Turn around, sell it on Poshmark for $12, and I profited, if my cost of goods was zero, I profited $9.05. So if you take out my initial $4.50, I still made a profit on something I wore multiple times. And this Peter Miller um, vest came from an estate sale. I paid $3 for it. Peter Miller is a bolo brand of men's clothing. You definitely want to be on the lookout for it. It always sells for a really good price and it always sells really quickly. So this one was cool because, let me see if I can actually show y'all what I thought was so neat. It had an interior pocket that had a bottle opener attached and I just thought that was cool. Anyway, this sold for $33 and gave me a profit of $23.40. All right, so for the first two weeks of June, I sold a total of 43 items, and that gave me a net profit. And when I say net, I mean after shipping, after platform fees, after my cost of goods, but before I pay taxes on my profit, a net profit of $543.63. So like I said at the beginning, that's kind of what I like for one week of sales to look like, a little more than one week of sales, but really for the month, I'm only behind um, in goals by about $100. So I think if I really hustle, I can pick it up for the entire month and be sitting pretty when I do my next What Sold video. Um, things are falling into place and my attitude is much better, so I think that I can get back on track for sure. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up below, and if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell, which will notify you every time I post a new video. I thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!